I'm at Bendel's Engineering in Carlisle. I'm with uh, Stuart here, who was involved in the purchasing of this Correa Fox 60 uh, bridge mill. Now, it's great to be inside this machine, Stuart, and what we're going to do over the course of this video is pick out some of the features um, that really stood out to you and your colleagues and will some of the reasons uh, influence you into buying this machine. Now, let's start, Stuart, with the, the head technology here from Correa right. because this is the UAD head, and I know they have patented technology within um, their heads, don't they? All built in Spain, go through rigorous testing. Um, what does this head offer you as a company on this mill? Mainly, the, the, it's indexable at every point zero two of a degree. It has a good 6,000 uh, rev spindle speed. Um, is it a BT50? It is BT50, uh, ISO 50, big ISO plus 50. spindle. So then we've got extra rigidity for heavier cutting if, yep. if needed. Um, and, and let's then talk about the whole of the ram that supports the spindle because one of the things when I've seen and been to Spain is they talk a lot about the detail in this in this ram, the fact that it's got uh, it, its tersite, its, its box guideways. So when it comes to the stability of machining, this really helps, doesn't it? It does, yeah, and it's also water cooled which any heat build up from components that you machine and doesn't affect it. There's a, a chiller unit attached to the machine, keeps the, the, the ram cool all the time. And is that important for you? Because I mean, the, the business that you're in here is machining, you know, larger, sometimes fabricated parts, bigger, um, bigger products. So you really need to r remove some metal, don't you? Which can well, generate that, heat. That's true, yeah. But also alongside, you may be roughing and finish machining at the same time on some items. So when you come down to the final machining, you're working to closer tolerances. It's important that the, the ram and the head and everything are cool so you don't get any uh, misalignment of, the, of anything. And the cross beam on the machine as well, it's very well supported, I'm told, too. And it's part it, of an integral part of the, uh, the way they, they build these to have that yeah, maximum yeah. stable... That's sitting on columns of roughly 1.1 metre square construction, concrete filled with damping material within, which makes it really solid uh, foundation for the cross beam. Okay, now, and, and in the sides here, in the columns here, these are concrete filled, that's what we're that's talking right, about here. Yeah, yeah, concrete filled with damping material. And, and you've said yourself that in, in the previous models you could see these they um, and you're oh. able to sort of touch and feel them and you could really feel the difference between these and some of the competition when you knock them and that's right I mean first impressions when you look at them the column looks big and solid and then you go and if you give it a knock with your fist you can tell it's solid and it's not just a casting mm. uh, there is something contained within it and we spoke about all of the individual aspects here the head uh, the ram cross beam and the column and all of these uh, things that Correa focus on to give you the most rigid working environment. What, what problems does that solve for you though as a customer? Uh, it gives us a lot less vibration on machining of components, good surface finish and good close tolerance working. And when you were looking at this, was this the, one of the only machines that you identified that was going to be able to maintain those results over long periods of time, do you think? It was the best fit for our needs. Um, some machines that we looked at had good roughing capability, some had good finishing capability, but the Fox 60 give us a really good combination of both. Um, I'm heavy, you're maybe not quite so heavy, but how much can this table take? 25 tonne. 25 tonne, and do you think that that is the sort of work that you may be putting through here? Quite possibly, yeah. Um, from, a from a proposal's point of view, we're actually finding that there's a need now for a lot larger components to be machined. So we felt that 25 tonne would more than suit our needs, looking at it from a proposal's point of view. We haven't come across anything that large at present, but there's not to say in the future that it, will, that it won't come. Although up. we came close today. Yeah. <laughs> um, 3.75 metres between the columns here as well. That's the maximum you could go for. We initially asked for 3.25 meters but a, a bid that we were looking at at the time uh, made it necessary to go slightly wider so we asked and Corriere um, gave us permission to go for 3.75 meters between the columns without any problems and, and you, uh, you know you probably one day get a job which, which means you couldn't have done it without 
without that extended we, we uh, three point no. seven five. We, need, we needed the extra capability. You did that on the um, on the Z as well, though, didn't you? You've gone we from did, one point yeah. two five up to one point seven five. The, the initial machine has one point two five meters of travel in the Z axis. We asked if we could have one point seven five meters which uh, Correa were happy to do for us as well. And, and there's no concern with the ram coming right the way down that you're going to get any sort of deflection or anything like that? I suppose the box guideway construction helps No, no. Uh, the Correa assured us of this. Um, it was sturdy, even with the ram right down at the bottom. Now, I'm picking out loads of points here, and I know I'm putting you on the uh, spot a bit, Stuart, but there is so much detail in this machine. Another yeah. point is the rack and pinion, the movement of the table. I mean, this, this table moves at 25 right, metres a minute. I mean, you know, you can get, did we say 25 tonnes moving at that sort of speed? That's, that's incredible. It does actually, um, it weighs up what weight it's got on the table. So it wouldn't actually set off and move at 25 metres a minute right away. It has a build up to that. OK, but there's, so some, that, there's some element of, of, of software in there that's determining what the weight what, is what and how fast it table, should move. Yeah. But part of that movement process is the rack and pinion which is different from the ball screw, which, I'm, again, I'm told is a, is a far better mechanism for axis for, travel. For backlash and what have you, yeah, and for moving at them, them kind of speeds. Mm. Because it has linear scales on that too it as well, which does, maintains yes. the, the yeah. accuracy. So yeah. I suppose that all told, the accuracy and the rigidity, um, have you put it through its paces yet? Yes, we have. We've tested it quite vigorously with different components up to now, and it, we've been successful with everything we've tried. Good, good, good. And I know you've got plenty of space in this uh, machine shop for potentially another one, which I'm told might not be a million miles away. And by the sounds that, of it, that's from talking, true. I've heard that this morning. Yeah. <laughs> and from talking to you and your colleagues, it looks like Correa would, would be the machine of choice once again. Oh, um, certainly. Huge, big bridge mill here. So much detail gone into the manufacture of this machine, all of which you can see here is uh, being put to the test at Bendel's Engineering. Thank you very much, um, Stuart. Thank you, Paul.